Hey, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us um, today and learning more about um, Starship Cloud and the advantages over uh, ship gear today. Uh, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the regional director here for V Technologies. Uh, I am joined by Jason Ferguson as well. He's our account executive for QuickBooks users. Um, and today we're going to take you through kind of a brief presentation um, and kind of show you some of the features and benefits of Starship. Um, and then I have a very short uh, demo to kind of review with you at high level, and we'll turn it over to some questions to be answered at the end as well. Um, everyone is muted, um, so if you do have any questions along the way, please put them into the um, chat, um, and we will try to get to as many as we can with the time allotted here and the half hour we have together today. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in uh, to the presentation. Uh, so let me just get that started. Perfect. Um, so again, um, everyone here, um, obviously we appreciate everyone's business um, of being a loyal ship gear user to us all of these years. Um, and obviously, as you have heard over the last you know, 18 plus months, uh, ship gear is due to sunset here at the end of 2023. Um, and therefore we are helping customers migrate to our Starship Cloud solution. Um, obviously everyone knows who V Technologies is that's on this call. Uh, but Starship itself has been around since 1989. Um, it has been our flagship product ever since 1989, um, working with the QuickBooks team for 20 plus years now with a seamless integration that we offer. Um, we do have um, recognition from earlier this year with UPS as well, being one of the premier partners in our Starship cloud application, um, which means that not only can we still accept those CTP or digital connection funds and being part of that program, uh, but all of the evolving uh, API uh, integration that we do with them um, is also very much um, uh, supported. So um, why do we want to use a multi-carrier solution these days? You know, obviously everyone on here is prim primarily using UPS WorldShip, maybe FedEx Ship Manager. Maybe you have some uh, LTL providers you're using as well, going to different websites or different portals to get rates or ship documents. So a lot of customers that we talk to have a lot of those different applications in their warehouse or front office. Starship is there to help condense all of that and give you one application for not only the shipping department, but really for your entire company to utilize and to access very easily. Um, those companies who do use a multi-carrier solution um, there was a quote out there in, in multiple articles that kind of referenced that, you know, when you use a multiple carrier solution, you're basically more apt to saving up to 20% in your total transportation spend. We know transportation spend these days is usually the number two, number three line item on any PNL. Um, so it is a big number at the end of the year when you look at your supply chain. Um, so by using a multi carrier suit, so gives you the capability of looking at individual carriers, various rate structure right, and making those wise decisions of maybe, hey, it is cheaper to go FedEx or cheaper to go postal, or maybe cheaper to switch modes and go LTL in a case. Uh, whereas you're using single carrier application, um, it doesn't give you that capability. You just get in that mode always shipping UPS because that's what you always have done. Um, but there might be some cheaper options, faster transit options for you to take advantage of to really kind of uh, improve and optimize that for you. So again, as I mentioned, you know, really cost effective, really comparing rates on different, you know, uh, one platform, saving time, not having to go put all this information in six different places. It's in one place now with Starship. Um, you know, again, having multiple delivery services. So you're not only just seeing ground options, but you see all options, right? It could be a, a, a deferred service to an expedited service, um, having all of that in front of you, being flexible and adaptable. Right, you know, tailoring your shipping strategy. We have different rules that we can put in place to help you kind of really take full advantage of, you know, hey, I got to get to my customer on the West Coast in three days. How do we do that? And how do we help you build those rules to give you those options to get to that customer, say, in three days? Um, and then reducing risk of delays and disruptions, right? No one really kind of tends to think about this uh, when you're using a single carrier, say you're just a UPS house. Um, but what happens if UPS fails to pick up tonight? right what do you do in that case um it's not very easy to just pick up the phone and call fedex and have fedex come pick up packages they also have other customers their operation is set up a certain way so having a multiple carrier solution in place gives you that flexibility to switch on the go if you need to um versus using a single carrier application 
Um, so again, I'm not going to touch on all of these, but these are really kind of just touching, kind of segueing into what Starship does for you as a main feature, right? Um, again, parcel and LTL shipping, that's our sweet spot. That's one of the main differences doing all of the LTL shipping for you with various carriers. Um, discounted now post office rates using those new CEC rates that have become available to many customers earlier this year. Um, so again, saving transportation, right? A lot of users are paying um, astronomical fees in accessorials, whereas post office doesn't have those bit same accessories that you can take advantage of now with Starship. Um, again, giving you that live rate shop, custom email notifications, also very important, getting that information to your customers as soon as possible with hyperlinks, information of what's contained in packages or pallets, all of that is available to you now with Starship as well. And then one of my favorite bullet points on this entire slide is metrics. Um, giving you that full dashboard, that view uh, of what customers or carriers struggle to do, right? Giving you reports, giving you information at in your fingertips as you need it. So you're informed of what you're shipping versus telling having the carrier rep telling you what you're shipping. You have access to that information so you can better negotiate contracts. You can have better visibility to where your customers reside. Um, so a lot of that information is in this application, which you'll see here in a few moments. Um, again, why move to the cloud, right? Again, we're always on the latest version. We don't need to have an IT department or an outside IT source come in and upgrade anything any longer. Starship is always running on the latest version. You will have no idea what happened, right? Because it happens overnight, right? You come in, log in, and just continue to process as normal. Um, we do all the work um, and manage that for you. Um, having access to unlimited users, all the carriers we support under the Starship portfolio, um, you'll have access to all of that with a, a monthly subscription uh, that you pay us. <clears throat> Managing seasonality, right? You're in full control of your cloud pricing. So if you have high volume in the you know holiday time, you can increase your plan. If you come down, you can do that. We don't have you restricted at all in any sort of way. That is all up to you as well. Um, and then restricting access to users. So you may give different permissions to users for different roles. Um, so shipping may have their own set of permissions that they can access, whereas maybe uh, customer service uh, accounting may have their own various permissions of what they can and can't do. So again, as administrators, you will have that full capability of giving those users access to certain uh, functions within the application um, as you feel is needed. Um, this is a slide of all the various carriers we support um, out of the application today with Starship. So here you'll see all of our parcel carriers, FedEx, Post Office, UPS, DHL, Speedy, um, all of them are on here. Um, we have all of our various LTL carriers on here as well, mostly national providers. We have some regional providers and as well some third, uh, three PLs that we support like Worldwide Express, Freight View, um, there's Freight Quote on here as well. So a lot of is supported. We have about two dozen now that we support uh, natively. Um, so again, if we don't, that's when we turn to partners like FreightView or Worldwide, where we can start looking at uh, how they can expand our carrier list to over 100 different carriers possibly, and we can speak to you more about that as well um, if that's needed. So again, just a kind of a quick little um, quote here, right, from one of our customers who kind of made the migration from Shipgear to Starship. Um, again, I'm not going to read this entire quote, but it kind of just goes to show you you know, um, kind of how their business began to grow, right? Um, so this one was particular around pallet loads of product, right? How they were kind of doing it sort of in a manual phase. But again, just kind of goes to show you, this is what we kind of see when people kind of make the migration. At first, you know, customers are a little wary, you know, how it's gonna work. They're so used to world ship or ship manager. Um, but again, you have that um, training. We have a full implementation team. Right, they kind of walk you through all of this and just like any other solution, once you start playing with it and get used to the application, it becomes second nature and you don't really think about it, right? It just becomes your day-to-day -day, um, solution, right? So again, another um, quotation here from another customer, right? Again, just talking about the bill of lading, right? Uh, from an LTL perspective, um, again, just you know, having that integration with QuickBooks, you know, seamlessly involved with Starship, um, just goes to show you kind of what we can do um, from that perspective as well. And then, you know, one last slide here, right, talking about, you know, time running out, right? So um, we are kind of very at the very end of this. Um, now I will highlight a couple things here. Um, 
you know, yes, we need to have, you know, everyone on the call. If you haven't made a decision yet to sort of make a decision very, very soon um, and a ASAP, right? Um, start uh, ship gear will continue to work beyond the new year until world ship or ship manager forces an update. So once an update occurs, that is when ship gear will eventually break and we have no future versions of ship gear being provided at this time. Okay. So that could be a month. That could be three months. We don't know. It's really when UPS or FedEx will determine that. Um, so again, that's really what the critical nature of this is. However, January 1st, we will no longer support it, meaning if you do run into an issue, there is no more support on our side for the product. So we are kind of running up against that as well. So um, we do still have 350 customers running the platform today. So still quite a way to go to get a lot of these users migrated to Starship. We are experiencing 14 plus uh, week backlogs uh, because of various implementations that have come across our desk over the last say six to eight months, which we've been speaking to pretty much all year long, uh, which we kind of had an idea that was going to happen. So right now we are you know, projected to be booking projects into probably late Q1, early Q2 at this point. Um, we have started opening up our self onboarding uh, for those users who feel like, hey, that's too long of a time frame. Um, so if you do feel like you have a technical resource or somebody who can take a look at a, we have a simple one page step by step guide, um, you're more than welcome to tackle the project on your own, right? And get on onto the product as soon as possible. We will give you access to our support team to submit a support ticket if you run into any issues. Um, but Jason or anyone on my team here can assist with getting your account set up. And, um, and then you can start the configuration process if you feel that's warranted on your side as well. And then lastly, we do have cloud pricing that is increasing coming 1-1, right? Um, so what we have today available, if you do make a commitment, either you know setting up your own account or paying for services to be onboarded next year, um, we do uh, honor 2023 pricing. But if you do wait until 2024, um, you will be subject to that increase that will be coming uh, along. So let me uh, jump over to the quick demonstration here for everybody so everybody can see what uh, we're doing. Um, so um, again, and if you do have any need for a more personalized demo, please reach out to us. We're happy to provide one to you. Uh, but this is going to walk through, I kind of put together a simple international workflow. Um, we've been doing domestic workflows all along, but I feel like to kind of highlight something different today is maybe around international. Um, so again, when you come into Starship, um, again, it's a cloud-based application. So you'll notice that I have a cloud, I go to a browser, right? I'll log into it. This is my essentially my home screen I'm coming into. Just like Shipgear today, we do have that import key function. So you can still type in your order number, invoice number, or whatever you wanna do. It will do the same thing and pull the order into Starship. One thing to note, we do, do, do not use WorldShip or Ship Manager for Starship. Starship is its own shipping solution. So those applications will go away as well. Um, so when you do, you can come in, you can scan in, you can type in an order number if you prefer. If you don't wanna do either of those, you can simply come all the way to the right here and click any one of these truck icons and that will do the same exact thing and pull the order into Starship for you as well. So, um, so with that being said, I'm gonna just pull in my international order here. <clears throat> so as I pull my international order, everything comes into one page. Um, so all of this information is going to load into Starship. Um, so you'll have your shipping carrier, customer information, right? And this is all being pulled from the sales order, sales invoice, and QuickBooks, just like it is today with Shipgear. So on the top half, you will have your sender information, which is defaulted to you, unless if you're drop shipping for someone, we can change sender information. Recipient is pulling in from the ship to out of QuickBooks. And you'll notice something here that this is in red. That's just telling you, hey, before you can ship this, we need to go correct the issue. And if you just sort of hover over the pencil icon, it's going to tell you that a contact name is required. I can map it in. I can always click in here if I want to and type in any sort of name I want, right? And then boom, that red now goes away and I can proceed on. Okay, pretty easy to do. Um, the transportation is a ship via method coming in at QuickBooks. This was mapped in from UPS Ground to Canada. Um, and that's how it's been translated over to Starship. So you'll see it's been bill billing prepaid. But if you want to come into here, just like World Ship or Ship Manager, we do support the ability of billing third party, recipient, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to leave it as prepaid for now. But if you do have third party billing, 
We can set up different third-party IDs. We can map in various account numbers from QuickBooks so we can trigger the correct account number to be billing to um, if you prefer that as well. With International, we give you the ability of you know um, who you're going to bill duties and taxes to. Right, That's also very important. That's always going to default a recipient on our side. But if you need to change it to yourself, by all means, feel free. Um, you have special instructions. You have broker information, import of record information. All of these can be saved on the front end. So you can choose who your broker is. If it's UPS, we would just leave it as none or FedEx, the same thing. But if you are using any third party brokers, that's fine as well. But all of this information um, pretty much comes pre-filled in. Uh, with the exception of a couple things you may need to select. You also have a full commercial invoice that's being built based on the items, right? So one thing that's different with Shipgear to Starship is Starship is going to pull the various items in which contain values. Those values are being rolled into, along with your freight charges, for a total commercial invoice total of which Customs is now going to uh, declare for duty and tax. So here you will see it's $816. That is what you know, Canadian Customs in this case is gonna use for the duty and tax assessment. We have different various of terms of sale, um, delivery duty paid, unpaid, X works, you name it, it's all involved here. So whatever terms of sale you're using, we leave that up to you. And for those of you who might be shipping uh, to foreign countries that require ITN numbers, uh, we also have a direct integration with Starship to ACES portal. So what we would do there is click a button, transmit all the data from Starship to your ACE account, you confirm some information to generate the ITN number, which then gets put back into Starship for you then to continue on and ship the product. So that is a seamless integration as well that's offered. Okay. Um, and then over here, you basically have just uh, different accessorials, right? So things like you know insurance, uh, um, CODs, quantum view is also built into this, uh, which you can use for exception purposes if you want to. But a lot of this will change based on the carrier you select. Um, so that is also up to you and available to you uh, to utilize um, if you prefer. And then the other piece is the various packaging element, right? So here you'll notice I have, um, I can default items into one box. I can define an item to a box, right? Where I can say, hey, my cordless drill goes into one package every single time. Um, so just like World Ship or Ship Manager, we have a full packaging database available to you to set up ahead of time. So you can define these definite or the dimensions along with your weights. Um, we do support dimensional weight. So that's what this column represents here. So making sure that that will accurately rate down below for you um, as you see. Um, and then uh, line items, these are critical to us when we're shipping LTL, international, EDI, uh, various workflows. Uh, but again, in here, we store critical information like your values, your weights, um, NMFC or group for LTL, class information. Um, international would only be available for any international address where we store things like your Schedule B, HTS codes, commercial invoice, certificate of origin. All of that is stored at the item level itself. So we do it up front. Uh, and then initially, when you ship these items going forward, you basically will have these uh, documents print for you automatically. Okay. Um, and then down here, you'll see your charges. Um, so you'll see a contracted rate. We also can show a published rate if you like. Um, and then something called applied rates or marked up rates. So we have various things like freight rules that we can build into this 10%, 20%, free shipping, whatever you may see uh, is needed. And we can set that up at the customer level so these rates can change. Right. And that's what we pass back to QuickBooks. Right. So we just ensure that, hey, as long as the charges come in under 152, you're in good shape. Your customers paid you and you're good to go. Um, so, again, and that could always be modified, by the way. So if you need to up it, make it less, whatever you need to do, you can always modify those rules. And then if you don't like what the UPS is showing you, you can always click the button to do a rate shop. You also have the capability here of doing a rate shop scenario, meaning as I bring each order in. Starship's going to go out and rate shop it automatically and choose based on rates or transit time, whatever the rule says, um, which carrier should be selected for this particular shipment. Um, but you can click this button and it's going to go out and rate shop all the carriers you have set up on your license and then return to you in a form where lowest to highest, right? That's what I have to sort it on. UPS ground is on top, right? So it's coming in the least expensive out of all my carriers of 139. It's telling me it's two business days. 
Um, and then you can see various um, LTL carriers along with post office, right? Um, you know, and any other carriers you have on your license, who other options are. And in this case, you don't see really anybody that has a lesser transit time. So in this case, you feel pretty confident UPS is the right choice, okay? And you can go ahead and ship it. But if you needed to change it, it's a click of a box, right? And it would just change it off to your uh, carrier account that you've selected. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ship and process this, and we'll generate. And I'll show you what the write back looks like back into QuickBooks, and then um, take you through a couple of value added items here as well. So as I ship and process this back, just like ship gear, real time, we're sending everything back into the sales order now. All the tracking information, all the freight cost information, um, all of your documentation now it has printed. Right, which I'll give you a snapshot of here in a minute. Um, so as that prints, <clears throat> right, so now you can see here's my commercial invoice that is generated with Starship, right? So I'll have things like your tracking information, all of the boxes, all the commodities, Schedule B numbers, um, freight, the, the item values, totaling up to a total. Um, you also have things like your USMCA form that we can generate which by the way, with UPS or FedEx could be sent electronically, um, if you like as well. Um, that is an option for you um, versus printing all of these documents. Um, so that is uh, something you take advantage of. And then obviously your label will generate as well, or your labels in this case would generate as well to your thermal printers um, and any packing list that you want created can also be generated from Starship as well. Um, and then this is just a simple write back, right? This is the order we just processed. So you can see here, I have all my tracking numbers associated to this order. Um, I can put things in like line items if I wanted to, I don't need to do this. Um, carrier service that was used, the total freight value, right back over here. Um, we also can update a custom field. I have you know something called Starship ship status that we can update to remove it from the lookup window in Starship. Um, if you prefer, you don't have to do that, uh, but is an option for you as well. But again, that's what the write back would essentially look like in QuickBooks. So I'm just going to take you very quick through the dashboard. Um, so with Starship, you do get access to a full dashboard along with reporting. Um, so in here, you'll basically see that um, we have access to a lot of charts out of the box, right? So things like total shipment volume, package volume, et cetera, is all listed here. Um, so you have all of that information. You can, um, by the way, uh, run various um, filters on any of these charts. So if you want to look at different dates, right, like say three months, it will update in real time what your trends look like on your package volume from a high level, right? So you can look at that. Over here, you have a distribution map. So showing you plotted points of all your packages being shipped. So things like red dots, heavy areas, green, you're growing in intensity, grays, you're sort of fading in intensity. Um, so again, you have the ability to look and see where you're actually shipping product to, where you may be able to negotiate better rates at, or maybe even open up new markets because you're not shipping any product for a specific date range. So again, you have ability to play with this and get visibility, which again, having a single you know, application like a world ship or ship manager is not gonna be able to provide this level of information, right? So that's gonna give you information for all of your supply chain, not just a single carrier. Um, and then you have things like reports, right? So you have access to all of these reports like address correction, late deliveries, international detail, parcel and freight detail reports. So we try to provide everything at your fingertips for you to run at any given moment of the day. Um, so you can print these into PDF, whatever you need for a meeting, um, or maybe even a, a, you know, a carrier meeting that you're having with a rep, um, you can have available to you as well. So again, very easy to run here. And then lastly is our notification templates, right? So which also comes with your license. So you can set these templates up basically however you want. Um, so you can have multiple templates. You can have a single template um, to be used. Um, so let's see if one of these is, you know, here's a UPS option, right? So again, you can put logos, you can put um, content like a PO number, sales order number, um, carrier information, data delivery, an inserted table, right? This is an, a, a, a hyperlink, right? They can click on it. This will take them directly out to the UPS page to track their own order. Um, you can put up, you know, coupon code to come back to your website for a future order, you know, future um, product announcement, whatever you want to do in this email is up to you, but it gives you a bit more of a personal touch than the standard black and white 
uh, quantum view or, you know, uh, ship manager notification through insight or any of that, those applications. So, but uh, with that being said, um, I know we have about five minutes remaining and I want to get to some questions. So I am going to uh, open it up now for some questions that have come in. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to turn it to Jason in a minute to kind of see what questions have come in. But before I do, I'm going to launch a poll. Um, so if you can take a few moments just to answer the question that is in the poll, and if you're interested in any of the um, pieces of Starship, please let us know so we can follow up with you after the call today. So uh, we do want to thank everybody for attending today um, and hopefully you kind of learned a little bit of something, um, you know, watching the video and the demo demonstration here today.